Hey there, this is Anmesh from Pixim Perfect. Do you know what every photo editing software in the world has in common? Filters. Even Photoshop has it, Lightroom has it, every third party application has that, Picasa has it. Right? Now, if you don't know how to add filters in Photoshop and if you didn't, if you were not aware that Photoshop also has a bunch of Instagram like filters, I've made a separate video about that and you can check the link in the description below. Now today what we are going to learn is how to create those filters. Have you ever wondered how people create these filters? And today we are going to learn that right there in Photoshop. Also what you can do later is create your own gallery of filters and apply it to any image that you like. It's just one click. Once you create the filters, it's just one click. And at the end of the tutorial, I will give you a bonus tip and for that you need to stay tuned. So without any further ado, let's jump straight back into Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, I have imported an image that I clicked back in Mumbai. I'm still in Mumbai and it's a picture of the Versova beach horse running. So first of all, what we need to do is to create filters for this image now and then that filter will be applied to any image that you like later. So for that, let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer. So the icon for an adjustment layer is this one. So when you click this, you get a lot of options. Now, these are all the parameters that you can use to create your filter. Now you can add as many adjustment layer as you want. And later we can combine them all to create the filter of your choice. Now let's go ahead and see what we can add here. We don't want solid color. We don't want gradient. Let's add levels here. Let's fade it a little bit like Instagram. Let's move the slider a little bit to this place. So what happens is, if you move the slider, the darkness of the image or the shadows of the image is lightened. So this slider lightens the shadows of the image. So let's move it a little bit to the point where we like. Fine. And this, let's move this slider. Now that's looking like a filter. Yes, to this point. It's looking great that way. And let's try move this. No, this is not looking good. What this slider does, it just darkens the highlights of the image. Yes, darkens the highlights of the image. And let's see how, what this does. Yes, it will move it a little bit to the left. Photoshop is all about playing around with sliders and knobs. So let's close that. We have added levels. Let's close this layer and then switch on this layer again. Let's see how it looks with or without it. So this is without, this is with. Now let's add another adjustment layer. Now this time we'll add curves. So let's select the red and let's increase the red a little bit for this image. You can do whatever you want. It's all upon you. This is just a demonstration. Let's decrease the green and give it a magenta color. Let's get to blue. Let's see how, yes, this looks kind of good. Let's decrease the blue a little bit. Yes. Let's go back to RGB. RGB controls the red, green and blue color of the image all together simultaneously. So if I increase it, the image, oh, the overall image becomes bright. So let's get back to how we were and let's close it. Now we have added two things, levels and curves. Let's go ahead and see what else we can add. Exposure is fine, vibrance, yes. We can increase the vibrance to around say 50 ish. Yes, this looks good. What vibrance does, it's different from saturation. It separates color in an image. It pops, it makes them pop out. Now what saturation does, it simply increases color. So we don't want to increase saturation. Let's see how it looks with saturation. No, it doesn't look good. Let's make it zero and you're good to go. Now what else can we add? Let's look here. Color balance. So whenever you're dealing with color balance, in most of the cases, more often than not, you must deal with midtones and shadows. Okay, don't touch the highlights. Always edit the midtone shadows. Don't touch the highlights because if you touch the highlights, let me show you the image kind of starts looking very, very wild and very uh, vivid and too much edited. The image kind of looks totally unrealistic and displeasing. So, but you can try it's again, it's all personal preference. So let's get back to shadows and edit the image as we want. Let's increase the reds a little bit, just a little bit. 
Yes. Let's edit it this way. You can play along with the sliders as much as you want. Make it a yellowish a bit too. Let's go to midtones and see how it stands up. Let's go back to shadows again and see how it looks. Yeah, it looks better with the green. Yeah, so we are done with the color balance. Now let's see what else we can add here. Well, uh, I did another selectable. Let's leave it, delete that. Uh, let's see what else we can add here. Photo filter. What photo filter does? It gives the image another color. For example, you choose a color you want. For example, you want greenish. You can do that. So, but I don't think we would need photo filter in this image. So, you can also posterize the image make the image po give it a little bit postery effect you can do that too but i don't want that so that's all i want to edit in this picture so let's combine them uh, the combine the adjustment layers and turn them into a filter how do we do that is let's select the first filter first layer and press and hold shift and select the last adjustment layer not the background layer the last adjustment layer and press control plus g and it turns into a group, right? And if you're using a Mac, press Command and G. Now, if I turn off the group, it's without the filter and with the filter. Now, let's give the filter, I don't think the filter is looking that nice. Let's turn that into a little bit more reddish, kind of sunsetty, moody. Uh, let's move this slider a little bit. To the, yeah, now that's looking like a filter. Now, that's looking like a filter. It's fine this way yeah now that looks good yes now now that's a filter if I move it a little bit more to it's the right yeah let's turn off without the filter with the filter now this looks amazing now how can we combine all these adjustment layers to create one filter let's learn that it's very simple let's go to file uh, export and color lookup tables now keep it to medium let it be medium don't get never ever choose maximum quality here what happens is when you select maximum quality it will take ages to export and ages to load the filter so set it to medium that's the mistake i just did the previous time i did this filter effect in photoshop keep the name you want horse fast run jpeg whatever name you want click ok wherever you want to save the Preset. Let's save it on desktop. I've created a folder. Hello. Let's save it here and let's name the filter reddish. Oh, what happened to my typing skills? Reddish red. Let's save that. And the filter is currently saving and it's saved. Now let's, what do we do now? Let's turn this layer off. Turn this group off. Now it's without the filter. Now let's try to add the filter we just saved and created. How do we do that? Let's go to adjustment layer and select color lookup. Now this is the adjustment layer that adds and imports all your filters into Photoshop. Let's select color lookup and here make sure that 3D LUT file is selected. What does LUT stands for? LUT stands for lookup table. Now make sure it is selected, select load 3D LUT and go to desktop and the place where you had saved the filter reddishred.cube load that and now it will load that filter straight into Photoshop now we are not using this we can straight away delete the ones that we have created it's just a filter again you can add it to any image that you like you can also decrease the intensity of the filter if you think the filter is too much you can go to opacity and decrease the intensity of the filter and then again increase it to your liking increase decrease Let's, I think this, this amount is fine. So guys, for that's all for today. No, I have a bonus tip for you. I just remembered. I just did it on purpose. So I have a bonus tip for you today. How to create a vignette around the image. Now, vignette adds a little bit of punch to the image, a little bit of uh, dramaticism to the image. Now, how do you add a vignette here in Photoshop? So first let's, uh, I think 90 would be a fine, uh, good value for this image. Now let's add a vignette. What do we do now? Again, add an adjustment layer. Go to curves. 
and drop that down completely it's totally black don't worry about it it will be fine later now let's select the rectangular marquee tool make sure it's selected leave the border a bit and select a rectangle as if it's a painting in a frame once that's done make sure the mask layer is selected this white uh, kind of layers here and press alt and backspace nothing's happening why nothing's happening what alt and backspace does is it paints the area that is selected with the foreground color which is white and it's already white we want to paint it in black we want to make sure that the foreground color is black so how do we make the foreground color black press x it just interchanges the foreground and the background colors and the foreground becomes black and the background becomes white again press x and the yc versa happens look here again we want it black and then press alt and backspace now it has created a frame if you are using a Mac, it will be option and backspace. Now let's add a little bit of feather to it. Double click this and increase the feather to your liking. To the point where you think the vignette is soft, I think this one is fine. Now still you think the vignette is too much, let's select here. And we had dragged the right bar all the way down. Let's increase the right it's not about the point let's increase the point to your liking yes i think this is fine yes without a vignette with a vignette look how big a difference it makes to your images so that's all for today before i go let me recap what we did today first create the adjustment layers then combine the adjustment layers and save it as a lookup table color lookup table how do you do that file export color lookup tables save the filter and then import the filter to any image that you want if you are still confused let me show you how to apply the same filter into another image so let's open an image simply any image that uh, would do let's open an image okay so let's open this one where did that image go yes let's open this one and it's processing yes how do we apply the filter let's go to this adjustment layer and add color lookup again load 3d lut click and let's get back to reddish red load and this will load the filter let's wait yes and then decrease the opacity that's too much yes so guys that's all for today this is Umesh Jinda signing off and i'll see you guys in my next video till then happy photoshopping and stay tuned